It's time to take a break from all the card games and instead dive into the world of card games on motorcycles. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, people. I don't even know where to begin with this. First of all, this is probably the most random Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's Play I've ever done on my channel. Because, okay, well first of all, let me just say. This game is Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Wheelie Breakers. Release for the Nintendo Wii. So it's a little bit of a, I'm not going to say it's a super old Yu-Gi-Oh! game, because that goes to like those early GBA games, you know? But it's definitely not a new game. It came around during the Wii era, around the 5D's era, of course. So around like 08 or so. Yeah, and <laughs> if you don't know anything about this game, and just by looking at this, you're like, oh man, this looks so epic and cool. Let me tell you something, this intro is epic and cool, but the epic and coolness doesn't exactly carry on into the entirety of the game. This game, if I would like to put it in one word, it's very perplexing. And there's a couple reasons as to why. First of all, I'll say that this game is not... I'm not going to say it's a horrible game, because it's not. But it is by no means a great game. It is not. It's just simply not. It's, it's an average game, for the most part. It has its strong points, I will admit, but it also has several cons. And, yeah, so, anyway. I'm going to go ahead and start by actually, um... Maybe myself. Let me. Why is the volume so high on my TV? There we go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Of course, I always go by shining and basically everything I freaking do. Shining has been registered. Um, I get to choose my design. Okay. Uh. Oh my God. Isn't that? It looks like you say it's okay. I'm gonna go with red. I think I, I typically like red. And then dual winner design. Let's go with red as well. I'm just gonna be. Oh my god, that is a really interesting color there. Um, pink, red. Ooh, dark red. I like burgundy. Yes. Dual winner entry. What should I name my dual runner? Oh my god. Who the fuck names your dual runner? <laughs> well. I mean, I guess Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 these characters love their freaking dual runners so much that they're like in love with them. Alright, um... You know what? You know what I'm gonna name myself? Or not myself, my dual runner? This is gonna be really stupid and nobody's actually gonna get this. Actually, no, no, that, that, that is really stupid. Oh, hold, no, 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 that's the wrong one, dude. Wait, no, it's the right one. What the fuck am I talking about? I'm so dumb. Alright, let's go ahead and call this thing... Um... I'm gonna name this after one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh monsters ever. All right, are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this stupid shit? Okay, I'm not even gonna phantom on that with the freaking explanation. Obviously, it's not one of my favorites. I, I mean, in a way, it is because it's one of those that's so fucking stupid that it's good. But anyway, here we go. So we have story mode, Grand Prix mode, matchup mode, tune up, and options. So if you're familiar with Mario Kart and you don't you don't know shit about this game, this right here is going to be giving you a red flag. You're like, wait a minute, Grand Prix mode? That's not in Yu-Gi-Oh. You're right, it's not. You want to know why? And I haven't even mentioned what kind of game this actually is. But in case you don't know anything about this game. This game is a Yu-Gi-Oh! racing game. I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I know a lot of you just went like, what the fu- I know, I know. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know what the fuck Konami was thinking during this era, but okay. So, that's why this game is actually seriously legit when it comes to card games and motorcycles. Alright, so, uh, sound settings. You can edit your profile, but I don't need to do that. Destiny Draw on. I'll talk about that later. Whoops. Summoning camera. I'm going to keep this on for one race, but I highly recommend that you turn this off um, as soon as possible. But I will keep it on to show it. Um, tune up. I can actually make adjustments to my deck. Yeah, so here's my deck. Junk Warrior, Sonic Chick, Sonic Chick, Yami. I'm still Cage. Three level downs. MST, two Rush Recklessly's, one Sakuritsu Armor, and three damage Polarizers. And that's it. That's literally it. 
So I know what you're thinking, how in the hell can you win with that deck? Well, if this was, if this was real Yu-Gi-Oh, first of all, I don't know what the fuck I would be doing in a freaking tournament with this deck because it's actually illegal. It's only 15 cards. You need at least 40. But let's let's assume that you could do 15 cards. This is one of the worst 15 card decks I've ever seen in my entire life. Alright, so... I'm talking strictly about actual Yu-Gi-Oh! But now I'm talking about racing Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes, you know, because that genre is so popular. You know, all those fucking racing games in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, it's actually not bad. I'll just let you know. Junk War is decent. Sonic Chick is... Oh my god. Sonic Chick is... Amazing. Do you remember how Sonic Chick is nearly useless in actual Yu-Gi-Oh? It's basically a weaker, obnoxious Celtic Guardian. An obnoxious Celtic Guardian is already pure trash. Um, yeah, that's not the case in this game. Sonic Chick is like your MVP. Yami is... Eh, whatever. Nemesis Steel Cage is tolerable. Level Down is actually really good. MST is fairly weak. Rush Recklessly is probably your best spell card. Uh, Sucker Rental Armor can be decent, and Damage Polarizer is okay, but you don't need three copies of that crap. You really don't. Um, okay, so you need at least 15 cards. That's good to know. How do I... There we go. So I'm going to put that back, because you only have 15 cards. Um, you can buy more later, of course, by going into, like, Card Shop. But right now, I can only buy cards that I already have. I have zero BP. I can buy multiple copies of cards I have. One thing I recommend doing is buying a second copy of, uh, sorry, a third copy of Rush Recklessly and the third copy of Sonic Chick. You are going to need that, but I don't have enough, uh, enough um, you know, points right now. I'm going to be showing these two later, but I'm going to start with story mode. Here we go. The Turbo Duel is an exciting type of duel featuring players riding on duel runners. As a huge fan, it's your dream to one day grace that spectacular stage. But living in satellite, your chances of becoming a turbo duel rider are pretty much slim to none. Then one day, some kids working at the factory uh, tell you about a boy named Yusei who left for s Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to catch up with this. This is so much reading. How the hell am I supposed to read all this? Like, in time. Anyway, it's about some Wheelie Breakers Championship, you know, the WBC. The very famous WBC. That very closely rivals YCS. I don't know if you all know this, but YCS, it's legit. But WBC, it's like its own league. Like, if you were ever interested in, like, you know, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on a motorcycle, you have to buy your own motorcycle, which kind of sucks, you know, because that's like a couple, you know, ten thousands of grand of money. But, um, but if you actually do buy your own motorcycle, just take your deck over there and, um, you know, wear like a dual disc, and you can actually compete in the Wheelie Breakers tournament, so... Yeah, the you know, so. I don't know if y'all knew that. Google it. WBC. Alright. Here's stage one. Follow your dream. A first taste of battle. There's no fucking punctuation in that. That makes it look so freaking weird. Alright. Hey there. What do you want, shrimp? Okay. What? Us scamming you? Yeah, right. Yep. Alright, so here we go. Oh my god. There's gonna be kind of a lot of explaining to do while I freaking do this race. Anyway, after this cutscene of every single stage, and by the way, each stage in this game in the story mode only has one race, and I believe there's eight stages, if I remember correctly. So, there's tune-up mode if you want to make some edits to your deck right away and stuff. Uh, you should do dual runner tune-up. Basically, you can choose a card and scan it. Depending on what you scan, it'll improve your stats a little bit. So, if I do, like, Jung Warrior, my top speed increases. You can only scan one, though. Like, if I then go to, like, Yami, I lose the top speed, but I go into acceleration. So, basically, spell cards give acceleration. By this point, it doesn't really matter. So, if I do this, same thing. Uh, trap cards actually give man maneuverability, which I think it's like handling in Mario Kart, basically turning. Um, and then monsters give top speed. I'm just going to go with top speed for now, that's fine. Card shop if you want to, I'm not going to do that. And then you can just start race or exit story mode. Let's start the race. Okay. Now let's talk about the actual gameplay itself. This game is so freaking... I'm not going to say stupid, but... If you've played this game, you know, first of all, that the rubber band AI is so real in this game. You can be the best freaking Wheelie Breakers person in the game. 
let me tell you something, no matter how good you are, you are not going to win these races by a landslide. It will always end up being a close race. Always. Anyway, you gas with B, and here's and here's the game. Oh my god, this is this is gonna be so funny to all of you. Basically, you hold B to run. He just used a paralyzing potion on me. To be honest, I'm not an expert about all these freaking cards. You can cycle your cards by pressing L1 and R1. Uh, you can set up to three cards. Basically, you want to set your trap card. So I already set a damage polarizer and a sucker right to armor. Traps activate automatically in this game. I have a junk warrior, which I can go ahead and summon. Let me let me do that. All right. Every time you summon, it brings a, a animation and it makes you like ugh, it makes me so freaking nervous. Like they're not gonna crash. I can use spells and stuff. Uh, but you have to know what the cards do. Basically, Yami can clog up his, like, field of view or whatever. Which, okay, and here's the thing. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Okay, what you just saw right now is not me sucking at this game. It's literally this game being so garbage with the handling. Oh my god, watch any Let's Play or play this game yourself and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is not, I swear to god, people, it is not me being stupid. Anyway, um... You can turn your uh, card around like by doing that and then attacking. You attack with X, but just to let you know, it consumes a fairly a good amount of um, your, what do you call it, B or DC, whatever, I don't know. On the top right, you can see a number going up slowly. Um, so yes, that is very important to know. Um, the max is always 12, and every time you attack, it goes down. See, it went down to four, and now it's going up gradually. Uh, you can improve it uh, by getting action points. Getting an action point automatically makes you go to 12, so it's incredibly useful to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do Nightmare Steel Cage. My opponent cannot attack. You can only carry up to 6 cards at a time, so just keep that in mind. Okay, here I have to break. You break by pressing Y, actually. Oh my god, I barely still made that. I still crashed, as you can see. So during straight paths, it is fairly easy, you know, to maneuver around. Okay, got another level down. Oh my god, that was dumb of me. Um, so yeah, during straight lines, it's actually pretty easy to maneuver around because you're not really turning, but it's it's the sharp turns that will fucking kill you and destroy you. Like, it is ridiculous. Seriously. Alright, so... As you can see, I'm actually driving pretty well, to be honest. And I am not murdering this guy because it's impossible. The rubber band AI is real. If anything, it's only the first race in the game where you can kind of, sort of, get a pretty good lead. I'm not going to say you're going to dominate because you're not, but um, the lead I have right now is probably going to be the biggest lead I'm ever going to have in the entire freaking game. I'll let you know right now. There's no way every race is going to be this easy. This is only the first one, okay? So, yeah, but um, you'll actually see that I talked about the rubber band AI. Uh, fairly consistent a little bit earlier ago, or a good amount. <clears throat> Let me explain that. Um, if you, so basically, you see that there's light points, and I haven't talked about, oh shit, I haven't talked about light points yet, but basically, oh crap, and now he's actually kind of close to me. But basically, um, oh my god, no, he made, that ain't good, I just lost my rush recklessly, I might actually lose this, oh no, I don't think I will actually. I'm going to summon Sonic Chick. Sonic Chick makes me immune to all monsters that have 1900 or more attack, which makes me the freaking MVP. Oh my god, is he going to beat me? Oh my god, look how close that was. So what you're supposed to do is actually use Rush Recklessly at the end of every single race. But the thing is, he used an effect that literally took out my spell, because I think that was that freaking Skull Monster. So there's 520 BP. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one because I beat this guy, so that's cool. But, oh my gosh. Yes, you did. You lost. Yeah, but the rubber band AI, like, if you... Because basically, every... You have 4,000 life points. One way to slow down an opponent is to make their life points go down to zero. I got Skull Collector, by the way, um, so that's cool. Stage 2, the miniature duelist Leo. So yeah, so that's one way that you can slow them down, but if you do that, they're gonna come right back within 20 seconds. Like, they're gonna be right behind you. Kinda like, um... Certain Mario Kart games actually do that. Like, if all of you have played Mario Kart 64, I think you know what I'm talking about. You're basically in first, 
let's just say fucking Donkey Kong comes out of nowhere right behind you. So you use a green shell or a banana to hit him up. Or hit him up, really? Why did I say that? To hit him. And then, okay, you know, he gets stunned, cool, he's back there. And then literally 15-20 seconds later, this guy is right on your ass again. And you have not made a single driving mistake. And you're like, what the hell? That's what rubber band AI is in racing games, in case you didn't know what that is. And have you always experienced that in Mario Kart? Yes. That's literally what happens. Now, the newer Mario Karts have actually been better with that, to be honest. It's been the older ones that actually do that. Um, and a lot of people say that that's actually bad game design, rubber band AIs, which it kind of is. And this game, because it uses that, that's an example of it being bad game design. On the other way around, which can benefit you, if you suck a lot and you crash into shit a lot, you can actually easily catch up to the opponent sometimes because they automatically drive slower because now you have the rubber band. Um, so it's always going to be a pretty even, uh, I was going to say duel, a pretty even race to be honest. Um, you're never really going to find one person dominating the match a lot more than the others. So this is actually Leo. So let's go ahead and do this race here. So Leo is going to be a little bit of a step up for sure. By the way, don't ever run into a fucking wall when you're like this. Because let me tell you, you are going to hate life. I'll just let you know. Okay, one thing I want to see... Is what monster have you summoned? Because I actually don't know. I don't know if you can actually... Oh yeah, you can look around. Oh! No, 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 no. Okay. He just summoned... Is that Gadget Hauler? I think it's Gadget Hauler. Um, so that thing has more than 1900 attack, which means Sonic Chick actually makes me immune. Dude, people, Sonic Chick is so fucking amazing, like... Oh god. It seriously is. Get the freaking hell out of the way. Alright, uh, let me go ahead and... Set that right there. Cool. I have Junk Warrior. Don't play Junk Warrior. What the hell was that? Yeah, but see? Look at that. So, like, you might be thinking, what is he doing? That's the thing that sometimes it makes it makes you feel like you're in these scripted scenarios. Like, it's almost like, oh, he had to take the advantage right there. But I, I don't know. I legitimately don't know. Nightmare Steel Cage is pretty cool. Um, oh, God, I'm driving really badly. Oh, okay, that one was my fault there. Because I actually really sucked. But, yeah, see, I need to be braking a little bit more. It's not that that's really going to matter. Like, what the fuck? Okay, so that's one... That's one lap down. What in the world did you just do? Alright, so level down is kind of interesting. Um, it makes the um, the opponent slow down a little bit. Okay, I got my Rush Recklessly. Thank God. Rush Recklessly is the MVP, people. It seriously is. Basically, and I haven't talked about the key to winning any race. Because if you're looking at this, you're like, Oh my God, you can just get so unlucky and this guy could take the, the lead at the last second. Technically, yes, but there's one exception. If you use a combination of level down plus rush recklessly in the last 10-15 seconds of any race, you should be able to win it if you're not too far behind. Um, there are some exceptions, like, you know, if your opponent is fucking annoying and, like, destroys, you know, your spell card. Like, what happened in the last race, actually? Thank God it was an easy opponent, because it's the first one. But if that were to happen in a tougher duel, or race, whatever... I probably would have been wiped out. Nightmare Steel Cage prevents you from attacking for a, a little bit of time, so I can do that. Not that it really matters too much, because it kind of doesn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, see, the, the race is still very, very close, as you can see. And I haven't really been playing all that badly, aside from a couple crashes here and there. But even them, like, they're not really bad crashes. But as you can see, Sonic Shake is fucking amazing. It is essentially making me immune to literally all of his attacks, and that's just so amazing. Oh crap, I ran into a stupid smashing ground, I think it was. That's like, that's like level down here, take this shit. Okay, so I have a rush recklessly plus another level down. Let's draw some cards, or a card I should say. But yeah, so pay attention to, to, the, to the map, to the course map. Because what I want to do is, I mean, first I have to get really close to him. And I actually want to use a combination of level down plus rush recklessly at the very end. Luckily, AIs are stupid for the most part, and they will not use a combo like that at the very end. This game is a really fantastic example of the saying, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. 
Honestly, it does not matter, people. The first 90 to 95% of the race does not matter. As long as you're not playing like pure garbage and you're just racing like this, you'll be right behind them. As you can see, if you're within this range of behind, then you're good. You're honestly good to go. Um, there's not going to be any issues. So as long as you're playing at least average, you don't have to be playing well. Playing average, it's not going to matter. The first 90 to 95 percent, it's all just visual, to be honest. There's, it's a rubber band AI. It doesn't matter how well you do, and if you do bad, that's fine. That's actually fine, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna. Oh wait, I can't. Oh shit, because I'm actually ahead. And go, burst recklessly. See that? That is how you win any race. I just had a huge lead over him. Um, and here's the thing: if you use rush recklessly during the race on a regular, like on a regular time, like not at the very end. You're going to be very ahead for a good 15 to 20 seconds, but guess what? Once it ends, in about 15 to 20 seconds, the rubber band AI is going to demolish you. You know what I mean by that? As in... As in, it's, it doesn't matter. You're, you're, wait, did I just press replay? Oh crap, sorry, I meant next. Yeah, so that rubber band AI is honestly a pain in the ass. So, your rush recklessness are useless, your level downs are pretty useless. It's not going to matter, because you'll always find a way to kind of get back in the vicinity, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Alright, well what I'm going to do here, because this is going to be an incredibly short LP. So, I'm going to try and go ahead and do um, either two to three stages per I'm gonna go ahead and do next stage the Emperor of the facility facility chief I don't know we'll see because I mean if I try to keep these within 30 minutes this LP is gonna be over super fast so this is actually a really short game in terms of story and there's not too many features I'm gonna be showing off after I mean I'm gonna show off match mode and then Grand Prix mode but they're, they're not gonna take a long time you know they're really not so I don't know Facility Chief. Oh boy. Alright, Chief. Yeah, whatever. You do you. Cool. I can't lose to him. No, I will not lose to him. Let's go ahead and start the race, but that's going to be for next time. So if you enjoyed this episode in any way, please be sure to leave a like. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. And as always, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great and, of course, a fantastic day.